This conference will now be recorded. Cool. Thank you everyone for joining. Please note that we'll be recording this session. Um, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Jordan, our CEO and founder. Uh, he's going to share his observations from um, traveling recently to all of the stores and uh, a key area of improvement here, which is uh, um, addressing our HR function. So, Jordan, please take it away. Thank you, Paula. Um, so it's not just my observations from recent travels, but um, you know, observations from 11 years of doing this and mistakes that I've made personally along the way, and you know, things that we uh, we see in in operating these clubs as well as other businesses um, that you know have similar pitfalls and similar success as they assemble a squad. So. You know, we start this presentation here with uh, with this pick of uh, last year's NBA champs, the uh, the Denver Nuggets, and really just showing that the owner of this team uh, is really not front and center at all. So the owner has done their job in assembling, you know, general managers and um, directors of basketball operations and putting the right people in the right place to ultimately win a championship and. You know, if you're talking about business, winning a championship is, you know, growing a, a viable business that's profitable and gives you good economic returns and allows you to scale. Um, so diving in a little more specifically here, Pally, you can advance the slide. So the most common reason that business owners don't thrive is that they are working in their business, not on their business. So, you know, we've gone through these things before. You guys have seen uh, seen some of these these slides and these points. And um, but, you know, to reiterate. There's three reasons that we typically see this happening, reasons that people are working in their business, meaning they're technicians. So the person who opens a, a barber shop and is cutting hair, or the person who opens a restaurant and is, is cooking the food, uh, the person who opens a pickup USA and is, you know, refing games or training in the games or, or making sales calls, working the front desk. Three reasons we see for this. Um, number one is arrogance, thinking that you're going to be the best one to perform these these functions because how could anybody do it better than you? You're the business owner. You care the most about this. Uh, so there's, there's an arrogance function. Uh, there's a lack of capital. Uh, situation where you know you you, you see what it's going to cost to you know bring in a team and assemble a squad and bring in Jamal Murray and and you know Jokic and you know a solid general manager and a solid coach you know that's going to cost money so instead of spending that money you you wind up doing it yourself and a lack of commitment to the recruiting process so this is something that is is you know, a big pitfall, something that I've fallen victim to, certainly where recruiting a team takes time uh, and it's frustrating and you may spend six, eight weeks finding a candidate and then they last a week and, and leave and ultimately you say, you know what, it's easier, I'm just going to do this myself. So these are the pitfalls that, uh, that, that we see and the reason people are, are not working on their business, but working in their business as a technician, as a cook, as a, as a haircutter, as a referee, uh, as a trainer. Advance forward, Paula. So what happens is instead of owning a business, you own a job. Um, so these are, you know, I just gave the pitfalls and I'm not speaking down on anybody. I'm speaking from experience. So, you know, this is me um, 11, 12, 10, nine years ago, you know, the first one, two, three years of the business truly working in the pickup USA. So painting the walls and refing games and handling training sessions and doing all of these things. And I'm, I was doing them for all of the reasons that I just suggested in the previous slide. Arrogance was, was certainly a piece of it. I mean, nobody's ever going to clean the courts as good as me. I was in there on my, my hands and knees scrubbing the courts and they looked incredible. And, you know, there's no way somebody could do that as good as me. Nobody's going to be able to ref as good as me. 
you know, for, I had no experience refing, but somehow I adopted that mindset that I was the best ref on the planet, uh, and doing the, the, the training sessions and the sales part of it. Uh, you know, I was going to be the best salesperson out there and I had all this passion and I could really be a great salesperson. So I, I, I owned a job at that stage and it was going essentially nowhere within the business because I wasn't focused on assembling a squad and working on my business and assembling a machine. I was focused on being the technician. Uh, and obviously without, uh, without somebody overseeing that and driving the vision, um, you know, your business is, is not going to grow. Go ahead and advance. Phil. So we don't have to get into this in, in specific. That's, you know, for, for future trainings and, um, you know, future consultations with Paolo. Um, but this is, this is what you should be doing. So rather than being a technician and rather than working in your business, uh, you should focus on building your squad, uh, and delegating, uh, so that you can be there overseeing the empire. And this isn't to say that you're not going to have any work to do. The point of this isn't that you just disappear from the business and there's nothing going on. Overseeing your operation is a full-time job, but it means that you should have no technician roles here. And when we look at technicians, you've got janitors, front desk, refs, coaches, trainers, sales reps. It's their job to execute the specific functions of the business. And it's your job to ensure that they're doing that and that your machine is constructed efficiently um, to maximize results. So if you're trapped in the, the world of being a technician because you think you're gonna do it better than, than others, you don't feel like you have the money to bring in uh, a full team, um, or you've, you've been frustrated with the recruiting process, um, you have to double down and commit to that. And it may take you two, three months to get your squad in place. But once you do that, you'll see that with a team, you can move mountains and have a profitable gym generating economic returns for you and not, uh, not being in the weeds of your business and owning a job. So, you know, the, the first pictures we, we had was of me doing all this work, um, cleaning machines and, and doing sales and refing and training. Um, this is how it should look at your club. So you should be overseeing all of these functions. If something's not clean, don't clean it yourself. Go talk to the person who's responsible for cleaning. If the ref games aren't looking right, don't get in there and start refing yourself. Talk to your refs about brand standards. If the private training isn't going as well as you'd, you'd like, talk to your private training team or recruit new people. Uh, sales reps, it's on them to sell. It's on them to make, uh, make sales calls and, and drive prospects in the building and get sales done. So you should always be in an oversight position within your club. And then the next slide, well, this is a, uh, a dramatization here of you know what it looks like when you're out of the weeds and you're overseeing the empire. Um, the next slide, though, bringing it full circle, is showing what a team is. So, do you have a squad that can win a, an NBA championship? Are you, if you take an honest assessment of the team that you've built, and the team that you've built is the reflection of how successful you are as a business owner, not what you're doing. Uh, nobody cares what you're doing as a business owner. It's the team that you've assembled under you. So have you built a squad that can win a championship? Do you have the right people in the right places? If you don't, then you should start today in assembling that team. We see on the baseball side of it, we see teams that both teams that are in the World Series lost 100 plus games uh, two years ago. Um, but they put the right people in the right places. They made some trains, the trades, they assembled the squad, and now they're competing for a championship. So you can do the same in business. And none of this is made up by me. Unfortunately, it took me years to get to this point. Um, but this isn't something special and, um, you know, the brainchild of me or Paolo or anyone on our team. If you read really any business book, it's about 
you know, delegation and getting out of the weeds and working on your machine. So key takeaways here is, uh, is get out of the weeds uh, at your business if you are in the weeds um, and start working on assembling a squad so you can be snapping a pick like this where you just won the championship based on the team that you assembled. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all that, Jordan. Um, again, this is a key piece. If you want your business to be successful, assemble a squad. So if you have any questions pertaining to this topic, please feel free to, um, you know, address them now. And we have Jordan on the line that can help you shed some light on this. So any, any questions from the group here? Feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and So Jordan, I got a question for you. So one of those pitfalls that you've seen is kind of a uh, lack of commitment to the recruiting process. Could you elaborate on that? What do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, um, you know, recruiting takes time. So I think sometimes it can become just a check the box type of function where it's like, all right, I got to hire a ref. Let me just get this over with so I can put somebody in there and you know, ultimately that's going to be a detriment to your business because you're going to get the wrong person in there. So it, you know, you'll get, oftentimes you'll get impatient in recruiting. And, you know, I've certainly done this where it's like, all right, I just need this person in here. So, you know, in the short term, it's easiest just to hire somebody and they fill the shift and great, you don't have to do it anymore. But in the long term, you've got the wrong person in there. So, you know, I constantly, anyone that I work with, I want, I want to look for a players, you know, somebody who's going to be dedicated and hustle and a student of their craft. So, um, and you know, there's frustrating times along the way, as mentioned, you can take six weeks and think you find the right person. And then, you know, they don't work out one, two, three weeks in. And then the thought of doing that again, taking another six weeks to find somebody is daunting, but it's very short-term pain for long-term gain. So even if it takes you three, four months, whatever it takes to find the right person that is then going to ride with you for years and decades to come, it's well worth it. So you just got to put the short-term frustrations out of the way. And once you find those A players that are going to go out there and work for you and make you money, that's when your business starts to thrive. Definitely. And I can relate to that speaking from when I was working on the store level under our old structure of the general manager position where we had that as the person managing all of the functions of the business and also being a technician as far as um, being tasked with uh, selling and uh, hitting sales goals. Uh, you know, recruiting was always the most time consuming and frustrating part of that role. You know, especially because when you're when I was operating under that position, my incentive was to earn commission through selling new agreements and recruiting was so time consuming and labor intensive that that took me away from, um, you know, making commission. So uh, just like you said, I was just like, all right, let me plug people in here and then I'll figure it out after the fact rather than looking from the long term view of things and how it would benefit the business. So definitely a great point there. Um, so any feedback, Jordan, again, just going back on some of these folks have been trained under the old staffing structure. Uh, what are some key takeaways from why we've restructured away from that old general manager position of being a catch all to somebody that's more, um, has a more specific task in overseeing the management function. Yeah, I mean, we copied the old structure from LA Boxing and, and UFC Gym and some of the exponential brands. Um, and, you know, there's certainly some, some um, 
solid methods within that structure. But as essentially what was happening is we were looking for a unicorn of a person, somebody that could manage and sell. And those are two very, very different skill sets. So assuming you can find that unicorn, which was tough, uh, then when they actually get into the position, as you just alluded to, Paolo, it's, it's too much. Uh, they're they're managing the gym while also trying to sell. Sales is a full time job. So now the way we've chopped it up is you don't need to find that unicorn. You need to find somebody who can sell, um, and then you know you just manage the functions of it. Or if you don't have the bandwidth or the skill set to to manage a team, you hire a an operating manager. So it gets into, you know, just a fundamental one person, one job type of approach. The refs, refs, trainers, train, salespeople sell, facility maintenance, individual keeps the place clean. Uh, and then you just manage all of those functions. So it makes the recruiting easier. Um, and then it makes the, the job in the, easier for the individual. You bring in a point guard, their job is to assist. You bring in a, uh, a center, their job is to defend. So, you know, it's it's in line with the highly specialized labor and delegation of duties. Makes sense. Chris, you raised your hand here. It seems like you have a question. Feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask directly. Um, kind of um quick question. Um, nice to um, talk to you all, just by the way. I'm Chris. Um, this um, question, um, since I've um, done with like I-9 previously, like um, supervising, like managing, um, from your guys' experience, do you notice it's easier to recruit and like um, find candidates all at one time, say like per season or per quarter, compared to always looking, always finding um, new candidates? Is it type of thing, do you think it's best to just to, like I said, do it seasonally or just always look for someone that's out there that can come in and be a good help. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I anytime I'm recruiting somebody, I'm looking for long-term individuals because, you know, I don't want to do this again. Um, so, you know, my objective is to find somebody that can grow within the organization. So, you know, once you get that squad assembled, you know, if you don't have your squad fully assembled at the current moment, then that's job one. Nothing else should be occurring. So once you get that team in place, then it's about, you know, retaining them. And, you know, when you find A players, giving them raises uh, so that they're they're motivated to stay within the organization. I mean, if there's one thing I've personally done well, it's just retaining people. So, you know, people that work for me stick around um, because when I find these people that make my life easier, I pay them and retain them on the team. So really it goes from a recruiting function to a retainment function. Um, but, the, you know, that said, you're going to have people who leave the organization, you know, a ref might graduate college and move or, you know, the schedule doesn't work for them anymore. So in, in that circumstance, you know, continuous recruiting is, is advised. Paolo probably has some better insight on this than I do, though. Yeah. So for those technician roles, um, referees uh, in particular, uh, that's typically an entry level job. So it's always best to always be recruiting. Um, so we have some enhancements to the website that we're going to add to assist with that, where uh, we'll be able to constantly be fielding applications from people through the website. So stay tuned for that. But, um, you know, uh, to Jordan's point, for the higher level positions, for sales reps and, and managers specifically, you want to look through a long term lens of making sure that. Uh, you're going through a clear vetting process and a very deliberate onboarding process um, to make sure that they're equipped with all the tools to perform their function reasonably well and produce for you. And if you continue to uh, cultivate that relationship, then they'll stick around long term for you. But, you know, there's different roles in the organization like we showed in that pyramid. So. For the technician roles and the entry level positions, there's more or less kind of always be a recruiting mentality. For the higher level positions, I would say look for uh, ways to cultivate those people to Jordan's point, taking care of them uh, once they prove that they're a productive part of your team. Got it, made sense, appreciate it. No, oh, great question, Chris, thank you.
Cool. Any other questions out there, Glenn? You, you have your hand raised. Please feel free to ask away. Uh, just a question about depth of the team. So as we're recruiting, how deep per role would you like as far as the amount per position, like how many referees, how many sales of buyers would you recommend to have? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that leads to, you know, just the intuitive side of, of running your business. You know, this is like being a NCAA coach, you know, where your 80% of your job is recruiting. So you know, I think you're going to rely somewhat, Paolo will probably have a more technical answer, but you're going to rely somewhat on, on knowing your team. You know, if you've got, if you've got four solid refs that are hungry for hours that have been with you for a while, um, you know, you may not need a lot of uh, a backup, much of a bench, so to speak. Um, you know, on the flip side, if you've got a lot of part-time people who are only working one or two shifts per week, you want to make sure you've got backup on that side. So you always want to be thinking forward, you know, as the, the Nuggets pick over here, you know, they're not winning a championship without, you know, a deep bench. And, you know, if somebody gets injured, you want to make sure that, okay, the season's not over because somebody got injured. So in the business standpoint, you know, if somebody quits or, or gets fired or has to move, whatever, um, you know, you want to make sure that your business has, has continuity. So I think, you know, that's kind of the long winded response, but, you know, just, just under being in tune with your business and knowing what pieces need to be moved. So you're never left scrambling. Right. And to Jordan's, to piggyback on his point, you know, if you hire a bunch of part-time workers, you're going to get part-time productivity. So what you want to move towards is, um, you know, even, even though these positions are inherently part-time, find people that are dedicated to it in a full-time capacity and give them the lion's share of the hours. And they're the ones that are going to be more consistent, uh, give a better guest experience as pertaining to referees. You know, if uh, they're there and have the lion's share of the shifts, uh, they're going to build that camaraderie with the rest of the team along with the guests, uh, which, you know, helps grow the business. Um, you know, same thing for the coaches, same thing for the trainers. So it, try to hire deliberately, I would say, and make sure that you create a schedule and hire for people that's going to fit that schedule. What we've seen often is, you know, business owners then fall in love with certain individuals and try to craft the schedule based on their availability rather than defining a set schedule and a set role and then filling people that can perform that. So um, I, did that answer your question, Glenn? Is there any more kind of clarification that you would like to address there? No, that was fine. Cool. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, I appreciate everyone for joining in. Jordan, thank you for sharing your insight. Um, just looking here ahead, um, we do have our HR Academy that's available in FranConnect. So, I advise everyone just to go through a quick refresher on best practices on how to recruit and onboard and develop your team. So please feel free to take take those courses and have your managers take those courses as well. And then tomorrow uh, at this same time, we'll go through a review of that. So any questions you have specifically pertaining to recruiting, onboarding, or developing your team, we can address that in tomorrow's webinar. Cool. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day and looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.